Hello everyone, my name is Ann Ho. I'm one of the Pulmonary and Critical Care Fellow at St. Louis University Hospital. First of all, congratulations um, on starting your first year of Pulmonary and Critical Care Medicine. And um, today I'm going to help you to get familiarized familiarize yourself with a flexible bronchoscope, which is a device that will be your friend over the next many, many years. Okay, so we are going to talk about the parts of the flexible bronchoscope and then second, we are going to talk about how you can use it the most comfortably, okay? So um, since its invention in 1962, there have been multiple models of bronchoscope out there in the market. But the bronchoscope have three main components that never change. Uh, first is the handle, second is the insertion tube, and third is the flexible tip. The handle, um, again, there are many models, but the components of the handles are always the light source, the eyepiece or video output, the working channel, the suction port and valve, and the angulation control lever. There will be a, a great variability of how those components are organized um, in the handle, um, but basically they all have this um, five components okay on the left hand side picture right here you will see a bronchoscope with an eyepiece and number one here is the is the um, adjustment ring to um, adjust the focus of the the photo or the picture what that you can see number three here is the um, is the camera adapter uh, number two here is the light source Number four is the suction port. Number five is the valve. Number six is the working channel. And number seven is the lever. The light source can um, be varied as well. Uh, it can be either battery operated or it can be connected to a uh, optical cable that connected to a light source externally. And the light can be either LED or halogen. There are great uh, variabilities. And um, the um, working channel also has different sizes as well, which we're going to talk about later. Here is another uh, example of the handle. Here you can see the battery operated light source. Uh, this is another type of handle where the light source is actually an external light source and it is connected to the uh, video screen. Um, where everybody can see this bronchoscope is used very often right now in our hospital. The second part is the flexible tip, um, and the tip has three main components. First is the working channel, second is the angulation wires, and third is the cladded fiber optic lighted bundle. The working channel has different sizes. It can range all the way from 1.2 millimeters up to 3 millimeters. And the larger the working channel is, the easier for you to suction, the more, the more powerful it is to suction. Um, the angulation wire is connected to the lever so you can move your scope up and down by movement of the lever. And then the cladded fiber optic lighted bundle is very important as well. And it is comprised of 20,000 to 50,000 um, glass fiber. They all um, coated by glass to um, increase the intensity of the light. Um, however, this glass fiber is very easy to be broken, um, either by um, excessive bending of the scope or um, by the patient biting on the, the scope. So um, it can be very expensive to repair, so you um, have to be careful with handling your, your scope. Um, it can be, um, if you break um, just one fiber um, or uh, it can lead to multiple fiber that broken later on and then it can cause dead pixel and it can be very costly to repair. Uh, the tip sometimes can also has different type of chip uh, to increase the uh, angle of the view and as well as the uh, resolution of the photo. Um, the flexible tip has different type of angulation as well. The more advanced the bronchoscope is, the, the higher the angle. It can range from either 210 to 180 um, degree. 
<coughs> this is the picture of disposable bronchoscope where you see very often in the intensive care unit. Um, it is very, very cheap. It's only $300 compared to thousands of dollars um, uh, of the regular bronchoscope. But it can function uh, and used in multiple um, ways like the bronchial and viral lavage or um, suctioning of the sputum. Uh, it just has um, worse um, resolution of the um, image. Um, um, it is battery operated, so very portable. Um, and also the tip is not uh, bended as much um, and the angle of field view is not as much. However, it, it can be used in most of the, um, most of the um, indication in the um, um, ICU patients. These are the features that a few commonly used probe. Um, again, they are very depending on the size, the outer diameter, working channel, the angulation, the field view, and the light source. Um, the newer bronchoscope has what is called the rotatory function where you actually just turn a knob instead, instead of turning your whole body or turning the arm. Um, it can help to decrease fatigue as well. Um, this is the example of some ultra-thin bronchoscope and the most ultra-thin bronchoscope right now it can be as thin as 1.5 millimeters which is um, very easy to get to um, smaller airway. All right, what is the ergonomic use of bronchoscope and why do you have to talk about it? I think it's very important um, because nowadays we've seen a lot of pain um, and strain in, in bronchoscopists. And in the recent report, there actually 50% of bronchoscopists reported musculoskeletal pain. And um, 10, more than 10% of them report significant adverse events related to this pain. Um, to me, the most challenging segment is actually the left upper lobe, AP core posterior segment, LB1 and 2, or superior segment of the lower lobe. Sometimes you even have to face the patient. And um, there have been recent advantages in uh, bronchoscope design, but to me, one of the most important is proper position. Um, so proper position of yourself can prevent uh, most of the injury that can happen. Um, and this is the example of how you can evaluate um, whether you have a good position or not using what is called an RULA or rubber, right upper um, extremely evaluation worksheet. Um, and this can be used um, to evaluate for ergonomic in uh, bronchoscopy um, in a few papers lately. Um, so basically, you evaluate your position by the location of your upper arm, lower arm, the wrist or neck and trunk. Um, this is the um, image of a bronchos bronchoscopist um, where I score his, uh, his upper limb um, uh, position by this scoring system. And you can see here, he overextended his neck, right? And his upper arm is um, at a, a wide angle um, to his body. Also, he extended his wrist. So his score here is actually very high. It's uh, five and it confers a medium, um, medium risk and he needs to change his position to avoid further muscular skeletal strain if he continue to use this position for a long time. So there are a few tips that um, uh, I would suggest um, to avoid muscular strain and they are um, first, you should adjust the monitor screen to your eye level and do not extend your neck. Um, do not afraid to use stool or raise your um, bed, um, the patient bed up or move the patient closer to you to avoid overextension of your upper and lower arm and try to rest your upper arm on your body if possible. And sometimes you um, can change your position as well, move um, a little bit um, to the side of patient if you're trying to reach posterior segment. And then if you have the bronchoscope with the rotatory head, um, use it. It could be helpful for the LB1 and 2 segments. Uh, and lastly, um, you should train your muscle to avoid fatigue. Um, upper body workout has been very helpful for me, um, especially um, to um, help with your muscle strength. So that it and that would conclude my presentation. Um, best of luck um, to your training.